Okay, uh, Snelda. Uh, Snelda is um, it's um, from it's an Icelandic salmon fly, and it can be tied various ways. This is a slimish one, which is good for sea trout. It's tied on a tube. Um, this is a fatter one with different colours. Um, there's a great big one here for salmon for fishing the big rivers and you can see the variety of colours that can be put into it and this this is another. Now it's tied on a tube and I want to show you what I how I make up a tube. Um, first of all I get a sea hook like this one of my old sea hooks I think it's an Aberdeen hook um, now I have demonstrated this before so you may have seen it forgive me if you have I cut off the eye with uh, uh, bolt cutters a very small bolt cutters and I cut off the point like that so we're left with this type of thing like this and you can see that I've built up with silk uh, and I do this on various I tie various tubes and I build up the silk and varnish it for various tubes now the one I'm going to tie on today is a cotton bud so you can see what I've built up you get the piece of cotton bud which I'll come to in a moment put a bit of rubber on the end which I know it fits because this is when I've been using and it goes on nice and tight nice and firm like that the cotton bud you simply you've seen all know a cotton bud just simply with the scissors cut it to size have a look what length you want you can do any length you like and these are cheap ten a penny and I do that and there's there's a tube we were going to use a tube I've already got one prepared and I'm going to use this one uh, because you may be able to see I've roughed up the end a little bit various ways of, of doing that uh, some people burn it a bit put a um, um, hold a lighter there and burn it so that the um, the silk doesn't drip off I just get a, a, a little craft knife and I put a few cuts in it and it, it's it's not a problem okay I'm going to tie the snelder it, if I'm going to be honest if there was one fly I would like to have invented it would have been the snelder and this is a fairly new fly a new fly to to me anyway um, but it is proven a big hit all over the world it's been catching salmon and sea trout everywhere and uh, it's been taking sea trout my contacts tell me sea trout in the Falklands salmon in Norway and it's very very popular on the Kola Peninsula in Russia and I predict that this fly will be a big hit for salmon and suing in in South Wales first thing I tie in is a rib you can use any rib any wire I like the red one given to me by my friend Norman um, I like this red and I'm going to tie this uh, use the big scissors to cut it because I don't want to blunt my other scissors so bear with me and I'm going to use a black silk this is the black silk now you don't need to start right at the head of the fly because it's um, all this is going to be covered over so I just put a foundation here where I'm going to put um, a silver body. The body's in two halves, various ways of tying it. Um, this is one way and it'll give you a start, but there are so many variations of this fly. I'm tying in a rib. I tie it in my side like this and I lash it down firmly like that. The little rubber here is where I will be inserting a treble, a treble hook, but you can use a double or a single. 
Right, the rear part of the body is going to be silver holographic. So I, the one I use, the one I like, it doesn't have to be holographic. It can just be a white silver like this. Um, well, this is holographic, but it can just be a white silver. So I'll cut this off. And I tie this in. Again, on my side. But that doesn't really matter. So this is the holographic tied in. This gives a bit of flash, which shows under the wing. I don't know whether to call it a wing or a tail. It's this part here. And um, you can see that's it. The, the, the little tube and the rubber is, is under there. OK, I'm going to wind this holographic in a moment. I'm just giving my varnish a shake to get it up to put a thin touch of varnish on the holographic to help it to stick. Don't put very much of this. I like the holographic because it will show through the um, the tail or the wing, whatever you want to call it, as it's working through the water. This fly has got to be good for sea trout. It's not. I'm I'm a tra traditionalist. I don't go a bundle on some of these new flies unless they're well proven. And I can tell you this one is. Just tie off that. As I said, the body's in two halves. That's the body, one part of the body. Now I'm going to rib it. I don't bother to rib the opposite way on this type of surface, this type of body, because it's a firm body and we won't lose the rib, it's visible. If it was a, um, a soft body and the rib may disappear in amongst the, uh, if it's a hurl or a, um, a dubbed body, we may lose the um, ribbon, but not on this one. Okay, I'll just get back down to tie off this rib. Tie it on nice and firm and I'll give it a waggle to snap off the surplus because if it comes this way, it won't leave a little uh, spike sticking up. That's the rear part of the body. And now I'm going to tie in the tail or the wing, whatever you like to call it, this part here, as you can see. Here. Now you can use any sort of hair for this. This is one advantage of this fly. Any sort of hair. Um, bucktail is good. Um, I'm going to demonstrate today with some squirrel hair that's been dyed black. I don't know where it came from. Uh, it was given to me by a friend. I'd rather think it's from a sort of an American squirrel or something like that. But it's a lovely soft hair and I'm going to dub that, uh, tie that in. I like a soft hair because it pulsates and works in the water and you will see that I'm removing a lot of the fluff, the under fur that's up the front because that doesn't do any good at all. And I'll be putting on several bits of this. Now what I want you to remember is there's going to be a treble hook at the back here, like that. So we want the, try to allow for that with this wing. So I give it a couple of loose winds, three there, and I try to spread it around a little bit, like that. Now getting back to the tube for a moment, there's a special tool for the tube and uh, it's a very, very good tool, um, but I've got used to doing this method. And one advantage of 
the method I use is you can turn the fly like that to put some tail, wing, whatever, this side. You can turn it around in the vise. Now, you can probably do that with um, the other type of things, but this is what I like. Can you see me removing the soft under fur? Important you do this because it just gives you a load of bulk, which we don't really want. Right, that's out. So now I line up again with the squirrel hair and I put on a few more wines, just like this. Have a look. That looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to put a few more wines here and remove this surplus up the front. I try to cut it at a bit of an angle, a bit of a taper. Just like this. Okay, now that's not, that's pretty good for the hair. Now, as you know, you may have heard me say before, let me move this rubbish. Squirrel hair is slippery. Lots of hairs are slippery. Lots of hair, so I'm going to just put some varnish on the roots of this. I'm going to do some more. This helps to tie it down. Helps to seal it all down. Top back on the varnish. And now I will wind this down, as you can see. Little bits of fur there. So that's the tail, wing, whatever you want to call it. It'll get tucked in the vise a bit here, but don't worry, that'll all sort itself out. Right, now that's the um, the wing. As I say, you can use bucktail, squirrel, mink, whatever you like. Now I'm going to put in another rib to rib the front half of the fly. And for this, again, you can use what you like. You can use a wide oval. I like to use a, a, medi well, a medium tinsel like this, which is springing everywhere. <laughs> Bear with me a second. I'll just put my clip on it and I will take some off. Uh, if you do tie this fly, quick word is it is a, a fat body on it. So you need to tie a good length of rib otherwise you may find you're running out. Right, here we go. This is the rib. It's the second rib. You saw the first one going on. Okay. Lash it down pretty well. That's great. Now I'm going to put... That's the second rib. There's one under there, the red uh, copper wire. Uh, now the body. Now for the body, again, you can use black wool or yarn. You can use whatever you like. And you can put in various colours. This big one here has a red body, as you can see. I like the wool, so I'm going to put black wool. It's a three-ply wool. I've taken one strand out, which I've used for a smaller fly. I've got two strands in here that I'm going to tie in. Bear with me. Okay. 
I'll now wind this body, the wool body. Trying to keep my hands away from the camera so that I don't distort your view. That's the body, a wool body, a lover wool, wool body, recommend it. You can dub black seals fur, you can put what you like on really. It's the style of the fly which is important. Now we're going to rib it, and because I've wound it I've got some winds in there and I may lose the rib. So I will now wind the opposite direction. It's a biggish fly, so you could use a wider rib if you wanted to. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. I try to get the ribs fairly even. Um, I don't know if it matters all that much. And I tie it down like that. Remove this bit of surplus and you'll see the fly coming together. Now the uh, last item is the head hackle. This type of thing, head hackle. I use a black one. I've got a nice cape here. I pick a big one from the top. Big chunky one like this. This is the hackle. It's a bit henny, which means it's um, soft up here. And this is the part I'll be using. I'll strip off a lot of the rubbish and prepare the hackle. Just bear with me a second. And this is what I've got, which I'm going to tie in. Move that bit of stalk. Right, wind this hackle. I double it. What I mean is I draw it back like this. And I wind it. Draw it back if you can. Keep drawing it back. This does help it. Give it a better profile. This is our hackle, just about there. Just secure it a little, and I remove that little bit of waste which I'll use for another fly. Now I draw all these back to try to get a better profile shape to the head. Sometimes a little bit of moisture helps. This works lovely in the water. I, uh, I'm not easily impressed with some of these new flies but I am with this one. As I say, if I could have invented it, I would have been dead chuffed. Now you see the head I'm forming here. Some people slip a cone head on there. I'd, I haven't got a cone head here. Um, you can weight the fly by putting some lead in the body. You probably know that I prefer to... Um, use uh, either a sink tip or an intermediate line and I don't weight many of my sea trout flies. 
I think they work better in the water. While I'm talking to you, I'm putting on a whip finish. Um, I put on four wines the way I do a whip finish and I draw it up like that. I'm going to cut the silk. And I'm going to varnish the head. And that's the fly. One thing, if I was using a eyed hook, I would be checking that the eye is clear. With a tube fly, just ensure it's clear with your dubbing needle. Now I'm going to take it off. First of all, so I won't risk the camera focus, I'll get a little treble hook ready. And you know I said you can use a any fly you like. I mean, this is our Snelder complete. This is it here. Okay, but the hook. Now, I, I, those of you who've not used a tube fly, the way you do it, you slide the line all the way down, your leader comes out the end, and you tie your hook on, and you pull it back in, like this. And you've got... Your treble hook there is now attached through the fly to, to your line. Do you see the treble hook there? I pushed it into the rubber like that. This rear half of the body glints a bit in the water because this hair, this tail or wing, call it what you like, will pulsate and it does work well. An unusual looking salmon fly, well proven many parts of the world. I love it. I hope you like it and I would like you to try it. Not too difficult to tie. Okay, thank you very much for watching that.